All right, this is Ken Roosevelt. I'm back. We're going to do number 19. Number 19 says use a Venn diagram to determine whether this set here is equivalent to that set there. And because there are A, B, and C represented in here, and we want to show it for all sets A, B, and C, I don't know if you guys can see that, then I'm going to use a a Venn diagram with three overlapping sets. If it had said for all sets A and B, I would have used the master card with four regions. But because it's A, B, and C, I'm going to use this version with eight regions, um, three overlapping circles. And I can use Roman numerals here as I label these um, for the regions, but I'm just going to use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the numbers I'm putting that in there do not represent how many individuals are in each region. The numbers in there are representing what I'm labeling each region as. So A consists of four regions and those regions are one, two, four, and five. Okay, so what I want to show here now is that the regions that make up this side are equivalent to the regions that make up that side. So how do I do that? Well, I start by writing what they want me to prove. I want to show this is equivalent to this. And there's actually a rule you can use here to show that they're equivalent. Um, if, if you knew it and you knew the name of it, you could just say it. But uh, since we don't and we haven't talked about it, we'll have to do it the long way. And this is the longer way. I'm going to use brackets here. One, two, four, and five. That's region A. Region B is two, three, five, and six. We're going to unite that with C complement. C complement is everything that's, that is not C. C is 4, 5, 6, 7, so C complement is 1, 2, 3, 8. Since I'm uniting these, I'm going to put these together and I'll get 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 8. And then I'll look for where does that overlap? What does it have in common with A? And the answer is 1, 2, and 5. So that's my result on the left side, and hopefully over here on the right side I'll get the same result. I start with A intersect B. A intersect B is right here. Um, it's in the center of A and B. It's where they overlap, those two circles, and it's 2 and 5. I'm going to unite that with A intersect C complement. So maybe I'll do this out the long way. A we know is 1, 2, 4, and 5. Uh, intersect with C complement, which is 1, 2, 3, and 8. What do those two share in common? The answer is 1 and 2, and I'm going to unite that with 2 and 5, which I'm taking from up here, and my result is 1, 2, and 5. So these two things are the same, so I have determined that they are equal. Okay, A intersect B union C complement is equivalent or equal to I should say not equivalent to well it's, they're equivalent to each other but being equal is harder right because you have to have the exact same things not the same number of things so they are equal no matter what A, B, and C might consist of so that's how we do that um, going to the next page here number 20 says let me erase this little thing. Um, of 155 who purchased snacks at a circus, 76 purchased cotton candy. Let me put cotton candy here. 90 purchased peanuts, so I'll put P there. And 107 purchased popcorn. 52 did a combo. 54 did a different combo, 57 did this different combo, and 35 did all three. And that's where I always begin, is with the 35, or with the ones who did all three. So I'm going to fill in the 35 first, and then from that, I'm going to start looking at these 
broader intersections, not the not the three-way overlap, but the two-way overlap. So let's look at peanuts and popcorn. 57 purchased peanuts and popcorn. Peanuts and popcorn is this area here. It's telling me 57 purchased peanuts and popcorn. 35 are already accounted for. So what does that mean? It means I haven't accounted for 22, but now I have. All right. 54 purchased cotton candy and popcorn. So I've accounted for 35, which leaves me with 19 up here. 52 purchased cotton candy and peanuts. 35 are accounted for, leaving me with what, 17? Is that right? I think so. Okay. Um, let's go to the next line. 107 purchased popcorn. So we have 17 and 22 is 39 and 35 74 74 and 33 would be down there all right cotton candy i need 76 in this big circle i have 35 19 and 17 so those add up to 36 and 35 make 71 i need five more here um 35 57 and 19 make 76 i need 90 so that's 14 and now I had 155 total who were surveyed, so now I need to do some adding. I will use this thing. 5 and 35 is 40. Um, 22 and, oh wait, 17 and 33 is 50. 22 and 19, 22 and 19 is 41, plus 14 is 55, so I have 145, yes? Or is it 135? Nope, 145, so there's 10 out here. All right, now I can answer the question. The question, first question is how many purchased exactly one snack? Exactly one would be 5, 14, and 33. One of these snacks at least. So what's that? 19 and 33 is 52. None of the snacks, 10. At least two, so that's two or more. So we have 35 in the center, um, then 36 makes 71, plus 22 is 93. And just double check that. 36, 71. 71 and 22, 93, yep. Cotton candy and peanuts, but not popcorn. All right, cotton candy and peanuts. Let me go like this real quick. That's in here, but not popcorn, so we leave those out. So the answer is just 19. Cotton candy or peanuts. So now we're doing or, but not popcorn. So or would normally be... Um, this whole thing is normally or, right? The union. But because they're saying, but not popcorn, we're leaving out anything that's in popcorn. So when we leave out these guys, we're left with, we'll go like this. The mouse ears. So 5, 19, and 14 is what, 38? So my answer will be 38. Let me clean that up, though. And then only popcorn is 33. That's right here. All right. So that covers that one. That's how you do that one. Uh, what's on the next page for us? Number, oh, numbers 21 and 22. I will not have problems like 21 and 22 on the test, but I will just show them here. It says, show that the following set is infinite by setting up a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set and a proper subset of itself. So here's A. It's 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. And here's B. I'll just take away one of the elements. And if I want to set up a one-to-one -one correspondence, I have to show that I can predict one from the other. If I know where A is at, I know where B is at. So let's say A is at the letter J. Then B would have to be at J plus 1. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence. And if B is at K, 
then a is at k minus 1. Okay, so I always know where one or the other one is, who they are paired up with. Okay, so there we go there. All right, and b, show that the following set has a cardinal number, a left knot, um, by setting up a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set of counting numbers in that set. So I want to show that the cardinal numbers, or sorry, um, the natural numbers have a cardinality of a left knot. It's a special kind of infinity. It's not the continuum. And anything else that has the same cardinality, I should be able to line up in a one-to-one -one correspondence. So these are the odd natural numbers here. Um, so what do I want to do here? I'll call this set uh, C. And I will show... Ooh, that's ugly, isn't it? Sorry, I've been doing ugly braces all day. I'm not a dentist. We won't worry about it, but here's a better brace. Um, one, three, five, seven. Next one will be nine. And this one would actually be two and minus one. How do I know that? Uh, experience, pretty much. But you could actually, if you wanted it, uh, you could go, this will be n, this will be c, one, two, three, and you can actually see there's a linear relationship between the two. You could solve for the slope. You could figure out the y-intercept. And then you could rewrite when this is x, this is y. But y is equal to 2x minus 1 or 2n minus 1. Um, you just got to play with it. Anyways, or you could try to figure out the pattern some other way. Anyways, that's how you do that. Um, not that you'll be asked to do that on the test. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you in your studies this evening. I will see you tomorrow for the big to-do. Okay. Adios.